Happy Friday, Trade Hackers. Welcome to this week's video update for pro members. Today is Friday, May 21st. Market's been closed for a little over an hour at this time of this recording. So taking a look at the markets, uh, first off, the S&P 500, you know, really felt the last couple of weeks that we've had some really volatile, wild swings. But, but to put it in kind of a bigger picture perspective, I mean, we're inside of 200 points from the peak down to the bottom over the last couple of weeks, we're, we're inside 200 points as far as these swings go. Now, intraday, uh, when you're trading them, they, they feel much bigger than that, but you know, we're just kind of volatile back and forth, back and forth. And kind of my perspective going forward is I don't really, I'm not, I don't really have a conviction one way or another where in the short term where I think this market got, might go, I could easily see this rolling over and giving us some more downside. And I could also see this thing ripping up to new, new highs. So we're, we're playing it pretty neutral. We do have a little bit of short Delta on still, which I'll show you in our positions, uh, several different positions, but uh, we're about one to one, a little over one to one on our theta versus our uh, beta weighted spy delta ratio. So we do have some short delta if this thing does fall again, uh, but we will be okay as far as the amount of premium we've sold, amount of theta will collect if this thing kind of starts to continue to push higher. So that's where we are uh, positioned. Uh, if we take a look at the NASDAQ, a little bit weaker and a little bit more volatile, but still, you know, still kind of in a little bit of a consolidation box here. Uh, on the on the implied volatility front, let me go back to SPX for a second. You can see on the uh, annual implied volatility percentile and IV rank, uh, IV percentile is pretty low. I mean, we're we're at 16 now. Uh, that's compared to where it's been over the last year, and obviously we've had some big big volatility and some big uh, implied volatility spikes this year. So that makes sense. If you look at a little bit shorter duration, and this is 21 days, 21 trading days, so essentially a month of trading, you can see implied volatility is fairly high. We've got the IV percentile in at the 71th percentile, 71st percentile, I should say, and the IV rank at 31. So uh, a little bit elevated if you compare it to the last month. Uh, and then RUT, you know, RUT uh, staying a little bit weaker as well. Uh, a little bit further off of its all-time high, but same same kind of pattern, just kind of uh, some some uh, fairly sizable swings within kind of a consolidation area. Uh, bonds bonds have uh, kind of settled down after they were on a pretty sizable downhill slide for quite a while. Uh, they've been really just trading sideways for the last few months here, uh, and that's helped one of our positions, which I'll go over in just a minute. Uh, you can look at things like grains, which we don't trade too much. You know, uh, soybeans were on a massive run for quite some time, as you can see here. If I zoom out, uh, but starting to see a little bit of a sell-off, and uh, and 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 if we look at oil, oh, let me look at gold first. Gold has been on a pretty sizable run and still continuing to to push higher. Silver is has been going up too, but not at the same rate as gold. And then oil, big update today, about over 3%, but that seems like a pretty normal move compared to normal for, for oil. And so while it does have some pretty sizable intraday uh, ranges, you can see kind of between 60 and 66 bucks a barrel for the last few months. So just kind of some volatile swings inside of a pretty, pretty steady box. So those are the those are the different markets. Uh, we are we've got a really nice, fairly diversified portfolio, and we'll continue to add on more positions. With implied volatility coming down, taking off positions, uh, we do have a sizable amount of cash right now. So we've got some dry powder to deploy. So in the next week or so, we will be look for some you know quite a few additional new positions, assuming the opportunity presents itself. Obviously, if we get a spike in, in implied volatility, we'll be looking for additional premium selling opportunities. Um, and of course, our normal iron ducks and weekly double calendars. And then, um, and, and we'll sprinkle in some uh, additional directional trades to help balance our portfolio as well. So that is the plan. So before we jump into the alerts, just want to give you a quick update on our day trading. So uh, nice week again this week, plus 3,197 uh, was our profit for the week. Puts our total profit for the month, uh, excuse me, year to date, a little over 45,000. A little over 12,000 on the mighty 90s, 3,500 on the pairs, 29,000 on the runners. And looking at the days of the week, so today marked our 13th day in a row uh, with a green with a green profit. 
So going back to three Tuesdays ago, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Now we're going to be, I'm going to be traveling next week, so we won't have a live stream uh, any day next week. So the next time we'll be back is uh, June 1st, right uh, after Memorial Day. So hopefully we get back on that train and keep it going. So uh, good stuff in the day trading. And then uh, let's jump into the alerts. So first alert on Monday, on May 17th, we did a rolling trade on our DE position to extend duration. Uh, John Deere announced earnings this week, so we wanted to roll that before the earnings announcement. Uh, and so let's take a look at DE to see where we're at. It's moved up a little bit since, uh, since, that, since that roll. So it's right here at our break even. So we're just looking for some more downside to benefit. We finally started to see a little volatility to the downside in John Deere, where it's been kind of on just a an uphill climb for a while. So uh, that that's good for our short delta position. So we'll continue to hold that as part of our short delta in our portfolio. Uh, IWM, another short delta position, we rolled this as well. And in this one, we went from May to July and just skipped over June. And this is just simply that we're diversifying our duration. So we've got some in June. And now we've got some in July, uh, which is under 60 days to expiration. So just kind of uh, with this one, skipped it. So it went from three days all the way up to 59 DTE. So if we take a look at IWM, so we're up about 85, 87 bucks since we did that roll. Um, and so we'll, again, just holding this for that downside benefit. If we do see some more downside in the market, SMH. So we had a, a short strangle that we've been managing for several cycles here. Uh, it'd been managed into a straddle that was at the 235 strike. And we were right near 25% of max profit on this piece. And we we're up, I think we closed it out, ended up booking $2,400 on the trade overall after all rolls and adjustments. So it's kind of nice to close one of those out for a nice profit after you've been adjusting and rolling and collecting credits and continuing to manage just like we teach in our short strangles course. Uh, so that, that's part of what freed up a bunch of capital. This was a little bit more of a capital intensive trade. And so we'll be looking to redeploy that capital into new trades um, next week, over the next week or so. ES, uh, long put vertical, rolled this one. We were well over 50% of max and, and based on the downside. We just had two days to expiration. So we wanted to roll that out, adjusted the strikes appropriately and rolled this one to 30 DTE. So again, just kind of diversifying our durations here. So if we take a look at ES, uh, this has moved up since we did that roll, so just outside of our range. So uh, holding this for that short delta exposure. SPX weekly double calendar. So we had two of these on, and we got down to one day to expiration. This one, um, uh, most of, I mentioned here in the comments, most of the premium was gone out of the front week. And so what I mean by that is when you when you are doing a double calendar you're essentially selling a strangle in the front week and you're buying a strangle in the back week and so that theta decay comes from that premium that you sell in the front week and almost all the premium was gone so we just decided to exit we booked a small profit on this trade and uh and and closed it out next trade de we uh, de with that downside had another we we, we were well over 50 percent max profit again so we just uh, rolled that out right before earnings, uh, and, and I just showed you that. So had two two rolls in DE, so a nice down movement in there, continuing to kind of lock in those credits as, as we roll. Uh, SPX opened new weekly double calendar, did this one with eight DTE in the front, 12 in the back. Uh, there's usually three days between these, but there's four this time because of uh, Memorial Day, is that right? Yeah, um, uh, so that that's why there's there's four there. Uh, so let's take a look at SPX. That's an iron duck. Let me go to our weekly double calendar that we just put on. And pretty close to where we put it on, dead centered, up about $85 since we put that on. Uh, if we get any kind of movement into next week, we might be able to put on another one of these. Uh, I just don't want to stack them all in the same place. But if we get some price movement, uh, we'll add on another one. I, I like to I like to put a couple of these on each week to kind of spread out those those break evens as price moves around. 
SPX closing trade. So here is our other weekly double calendar that we had that expired this week. This one booked uh, over 35% profit. So nice trade there. Uh, ZB, we had that short strangle that we've been managing. We rolled this. So we, we still had 35 days to expiration, but we were over 50% of max profit. So we went ahead and rolled it out to 63. We usually like to stay in that 30 to 60 days. So this is a couple days outside of that range, but not a big deal um, to do it to 63. So we went ahead and did so and went ahead and locked in that credit and extended duration here. And gave us a fresh, fresh spread, a little bit wider than the other one. And so you can see price is pretty close to where we put it on, just uh, dead centered. We kept the strikes exactly the same. So you see we rolled it from 152.161 to 152.161 in the next cycle. SPY opened a vertigo. I've been looking at these. I, I mentioned to uh, Krish in the community. I, you know, I've, I look at these anytime we have an update or anytime we have a volatility contraction. I'm looking at these. The put skew in there is just is is really is really heavy, as I mentioned here, and so um, we we went ahead and put one on. Just just did it small uh, because we have had a couple days of implied volatility contracting in a row. But I'll show you what what that looks like when I say there's heavy uh, heavy skew. Is okay. So here's the center of our little valley, right? But look at the PNL graph. The the kind of the balance of the PNL graph is right here. And so when you have that heavy skew, that's kind of what it looks like. And so that's kind of the reason why I haven't, I've stayed away from, from putting this on recently, but uh, you know, like I said, with a, with a couple of big up days in the S and P and, and some days of com, uh, uh, contraction of implied volatility um, you know, this thing's just been kind of in this range here. So hopefully obviously with a vertigo, we want this thing to, push a nice push higher or a nice push lower. So I think we're in a good position for that to happen. You can see prices right here. It's moved up a little bit on us. It's actually down here when we first entered kind of at the center of this, uh, of this profit line here. So if we can get a nice push up or a nice push down, uh, we can book a nice profit on that one. And if, you know, if, if we get the market continuing to push up and implied volatility continuing to contract, we'll layer on uh, more of those vertigos if it makes sense. DIA, so this is another one of our uh, short delta plays, uh, short call vertical. So we went ahead and we were down to the expiration day. I was looking for DIA on, um, I've been looking at rolling this all week. Uh, we got this down move and got us right back into range. And I was seeing if we were going to get a little bit more and then it just kind of popped up on us, popped up out of range. So got down to expiration day. So we went ahead and just rolled that out. And so you can see it's pretty close to right where we put it on, which we rolled it today. So that makes sense. So we just, we rolled this one from May out to July as well. And July with 56 days to expiration. So we'll continue to hold that for the short Delta exposure. And then lastly, did a closing trade in QQQ. So we had an iron duck in QQQ uh, price. It looked like we had a chance to potentially uh, close this one out in the duck head, but Price jumped up on us, and um, so so down here. If we would have if we would have kind of stayed in this area or lower, uh, we would have hit a duck head, but it kind of popped up on us, and so we just closed it out and booked a uh, booked a beak profit on that one. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of our other positions here, starting with Apple. So we've got a uh, another one of our short delta plays in Apple. Price is right inside range there. Uh, DE, I already mentioned, DIA, I already mentioned, IWM, I mentioned, McDonald's. All right, so we got a, uh, a long put diagonal in McDonald's. It's pushed up a little bit since we put this on, so still got some room to the downside. And we've got all the way out to June 5th in this one, so we've got some time. And the, uh, the positioning for this one is, you know, we, with that flush, we had this big flush in McDonald's, and then it started to bounce up. And so we're looking for a potential rollover. It started to, now it's kind of popped back up into that range and just kind of grinding sideways, uh, but still has some promise of going down. And so we will benefit from that if that happens. And then Netflix and Nvidia, a couple of long put diagonals as well. Now in these ones, Netflix, we started with two contracts. When, the, when these stocks were down, we already booked uh, half of those. So we, we booked one contract in Netflix. And now it's now it's since popped back up, uh, so you can see that will pop back up. But we'll still hold this to see if we get some more downside. It's uh, it's given us that short delta that we want in our portfolio. 
NVIDIA came out and announced this morning that they were going to do a four for one stock split. So it's a $600 stock right now. It'll drop to about $120 stock, assuming that gets all approved by their by their board, and that will happen sometime in July. I believe July 20th is the uh, is the date they have on that. So based on that news of the stock split, NVIDIA popped up this morning. Now it's come down a little bit. Uh, we will close this before earnings. Uh, NVIDIA announces earnings on 526 after the market closes. So by 526, we'll have this one closed. Uh, we're pretty, uh, so we already took off half of this one as well. We had two contracts. Uh, moved down, we booked profits, and now it's come back pretty close to where we put it on. So hopefully we get a little bit more downside before earnings and we can book some more profits on that one, but we will see what happens. QQQ, I already mentioned we booked that iron duck. And then we've also got a long put diagonal in the queues. Uh, same thing here. This thing moved down. We had five contracts to start. We've got two left. So this thing on that flush, we booked a bunch of profits. Now it's come back and we're still up about 55 on these last two, but holding to see if we can get another down move and, uh, and potentially get some more profits if the queues move down. And that is on an expiration of 529. So we'll be closing that, at, that one out next week regardless. And then uh, the other position we have in the queues is a short call vertical. You can see we're up about a hundred and some dollars on that one since our last adjustment. So holding that for some more potential downside. Uh, I mentioned SPX, I believe, at least, oh no, I mentioned, I mentioned the weekly double calendar, but we've also got a couple of iron ducks in here. Here's one, and you can see price is up the beak. Uh, if we put our price slice right there, change our date to 529, yeah, so we still got about a 32% chance that price could come back into our duck head, into our max profit area, so we're gonna hold this one a little bit closer to expiration. This expires next Friday. And then we've got another one that expires on Wednesday, the 27th. Uh, and this one is right on the edge here. So if we get a little down movement into next week, hopefully we can book a duck head there. Uh, I mentioned SPY. And then lastly, XLK, another short delta piece. This is a long put vertical. Price is right inside of range, pretty close to where we put it on. Just looking for some downside action to benefit that one. So those are all the alerts. Those are all the positions. That's your update. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, have a fantastic weekend, and we'll see you in the community on Monday. Take care.